Buckle up for this one guys because there is an absolute huge amount to unpack. We have got some brand new firmware for the DJI Mavic 3 Classic that I'm going to be demonstrating. Some really, really cool features that absolutely nobody asked for. We have got a new firmware update for the DJI RC controller. That's the one with the screen. We've got a firmware update for the DJI RC N1 controller as well. And we've also got a DJI Fly app 1.11.4 to enable all of these new features and settings to be able to happen. Now, don't just think this is just about the DJI Mavic 3 because there is a really cool feature that has been added to the DJI Fly app 1.11.4 that I think most of you are going to find useful. Not so much if you do have the DJI Mini 3 Pro, but if you do have an older drone such as the DJI Mavic Mini, the Mini SE, the Mini 2, the Mini 2 SE for example, um, or of the other ones that are not the Mini 3 Pro, then it's a really handy feature that I think you're going to absolutely love. So let's get into it. <laughs> So whenever there is a firmware update, all we need to do is turn the drone on, turn your controller on, and generally you're going to get some sort of prompt to say that there is a new firmware uh, update available. Connect your drone to the internet via your remote controller. Whether you're using the screen controller, you'll need to connect it to Wi-Fi, or if you're using the DJI RC M1 with your phone, of course, you're generally going to have an internet connection already. Once that is all unpacked, we can see there is some really, really cool features for the DJI Mavic 3 Classic. Now, unfortunately, I cannot show you the additional features features that do come on the DJI Mavic 3 Pro because I don't have it but I'm going to show you the main ones that have been added to the Mavic 3 Classic and like I say interesting AR features pretty cool but nobody really asked for them and I'm not really sure why you'd use them and um, but if you find a use please do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below at the end of the video now, if you are using a mobile phone such as an iPhone, you just go to your app store and you will see the update available. If you're using an Android device, generally, uh, it will just pop up on the screen to say there is a new version of the DJI Fly app. Of course, if you are using one of the screen controllers, there is no way to just update the DJI Fly app within that controller. So it does come in the form of a brand new firmware update. Okay, And I believe the current one is 01.03.0500. Um, it will be on screen. I'm sorry if I've got that wrong. I've basically got that many firmware versions around in my head. Um, it gets a little bit confusing even for me. So let's look at the menu features then. And the DJI Fly app 1.11.4 is all to accommodate the new features on the DJI Mavic 3 Classic. But like I've already mentioned, there is some for everybody. So first of all, we've got the DJI Mavic 3 series now supports displaying AR return to home route and AR home point, visualizing the aircraft's return for a greater peace of mind. And what is really cool is we also have this new frame guide which enables multi-aspect ratio masking during the video recording and then basically as it tells you we have to update the aircraft firmware to the latest version to be able to use the above features but of course I've already mentioned that we also have vision assist and that's available again on the Mavic 3 series and that allows users to live view from the aircraft's front rear left and right um, obstacle avoidance sensor never even knew that was even remotely possible but it turns out it is there is also a really other cool feature if you do have the DJI Mavic 3 Classic or the Mavic 3 Pro that I genuinely wish they would bring to all of the range. But again, I'm going to explain that in more detail. And it's all to do with the downward obstacle avoidance sensors. But let's carry on with the video. So taking a flight out then with the DJI Mavic 3 Classic, uh, we're just going to get a little bit of a distance away. And one of the first things you're going to notice as I pan the camera around is you can see a nice little floating hitch on our display screen and this essentially indicates the home point with which we took off from now yes that is really really handy if you of course are flying along and you always basically if you're going to lose your bearings or anything like that okay um, that H will always be displayed on your live view on your controller now if you think that is a really cool feature I personally am slightly indifferent about all of this yeah it's interesting and it's very similar to what you get if you find the dji fpv um, or the dji avata now you can of course if you ever found yourself in a situation as you already know by now all you can do is look at the bottom compass okay just point the controller towards uh, where your drone is and fly back towards yourself or a personal favorite of mine is just to open up that map and just follow that orange stroke red line whichever color you believe it to be all the way back to your home point and that is 
by far the most efficient way of doing it. Now they've also added a really interesting display when it comes to the return to home. So let's just demonstrate that now by of course returning to home. So let's hit that return to home button and as you can see what it's now going to do is just show this little sort of green indicator uh, which is basically indicating the path with which our DJI Mavic 3 Classic is going to fly on its route all the way back to the home point. Now yes it's quite a cool little visual indicator of exactly where the drone is actually going to fly. Again maybe this is just me not being overly excited by this but I, I, I don't get the point. Um, of course you've got your live view um, if you don't have your live view because you've disconnected you're not going to see this green indicator anywhere um, I'm not entirely sure what the point is but anyway it's quite cool um, I suppose if you're into that sort of thing now to demonstrate a third new feature which has been added to this range and as we follow the return to home landing all the way down to the ground as we get closer when the camera is tilted 90 degrees down you can see we have got a silhouette um, of the drone's footprint potentially showing us where it will actually land. It could be that you took off from a flat piece of land, but it's going to move, uh, you know, maybe half a meter to the side, for example, uh, we, when we are returning to home. Um, and you can basically see where it will actually land in relation to that, so you can manually adjust it to a more safe landing spot. So yeah, actually, um, even though I'm not a particular fan uh, of the second new feature, I do think that one is actually quite useful. Now, of course, one thing I do like about this new update is the fact that DJI to be fair to them um, if you do not like these three new AR features you can just pop into the menu and you can turn them off as you can see if I turn the first one off so get rid of the home point um, it just completely disappears from view click it back on it appears back into view again and it's the same during a return to home as well if I execute the return to home you see our green path okay or I can go back into the DJI flight app just turn that off and of course it disappears so it's quite nice that even though they have given those features we can actually turn it off if we want to now one feature that dji have just added to the dji mavic 3 range is the bizarre ability to use the obstacle avoidance sensors as a camera yeah it's really really odd all we need to do is just swipe right on the compass indicator down in the bottom corner and if we cycle between the four of them you can see uh, we can see the props um and I'm not entirely sure why you would ever use this um, because, of course, um, yeah, I just don't really understand. If you was potentially framing a shot and flying backwards, you could just look up at the drone in the sky and see whether it was clear or not to do that. But ultimately, DJI have decided to give us that feature and who am I to question them? Now there is another new feature just specific to the DJI Mavic 3 series and if we go into the safety tab and then all the way down to the bottom to the advanced settings you can see we now can disable the below obstacle avoidance sensors so to just to give you a live demonstration of this and why it may be useful is of course if you are trying to descend or land over uneven ground the drone will sense it's not safe to land there so it will stop no matter how much you push that stick down it is not not going to go any further however if we go into the DJI flight app and toggle this off it will actually allow us if we push that stick further to land so basically why would you ever want to turn this off then now I basically found myself not so long ago filming a really interesting artifact here in Hull it was an old-fashioned trawler and it was being taken for uh, repair and I was actually flying off the back of a tugboat okay and basically when you are on a boat these things are traveling at speed and essentially because the, the ground was constantly moving okay uh, with my DJI Air 2S it had a huge amount of trouble landing every time I tried to land it it just didn't like it and eventually I basically if I'm honest with you almost had to crash land it um, onto the back of the tug just to get it to land it was a real pain whereas this feature the fact that I can actually toggle off the downward sensors basically means I can just hot shoe that thing right in and just land it without having to worry about it trying to calculate whether it's safe or not and as you can see just in this little demonstration on I can't land it off I can so I really do like that and I think that's a great feature and again certainly something I think that DJI should bring to the entire DJI range 
So now Gavin, I hear you say, now you've told us all about those features on the DJI Mavic 3 Classic, but you haven't told us yet about what you said at the beginning of the video is something for everybody. Well, here it is. So basically what DJI have now done is added something called frame guides. Now, if you do have the DJI Mini 3 Pro, of course, these are going to be absolutely no good to you because with the DJI Mini 3 Pro at the press of a button, you can rotate that camera vertically to be able to record portrait native videos and photos. But if you don't have the DJI Mini 3 Pro um, and you have another drone but would like to recreate that effect, whereas what is really cool about these new DJI frame guides is the fact that you can set that portrait and it's going to give you a visual indicator on your screen of what that portrait image would actually look look like and what's even more cool is even though we've got that guide on our screen it doesn't crop in for us so if you want to record in landscape you will still get the full picture for a potential landscape uh, project for example but then if you want to go back into it and just again load it into your video editor you know the subject with which you are filming is perfectly framed within the portrait resolution and I think that's a really really neat feature that DJI have thought of so I have been out flying with with the DJI Mini 2, the Mini 3 Pro, the Mavic 3 Classic on this one, okay? And I found absolutely no bugs. Everything has worked exactly perfectly. Uh, so I would strongly suggest if you want this frame guide feature to go ahead and update. So it's time to wrap up this one. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below to everything we've unpacked on this video. Please do, if you found this entertaining or at least useful, hit that thumbs up. It tells YouTube that more people just like you might want to watch my content. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.